Welcome to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Jennifer Caudill, and joining me today is Dr. Roxana Dronka. Dr. Dronka is an assistant professor of oncology at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Dronka, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Um, so let's start with talking about PD-1 inhibitors. Um, can you give us a little overview of the effectiveness of PD-1 inhibitors, uh, especially for melanoma, based on our current evidence? Sure. For patients with metastatic or unresectable melanoma, uh, anti-PD-1 therapies result in a response rate in around 30% for patients with previously treated disease and close to 40 to 45% for patients with, that are treatment naive. These treatments result in durable clinical responses, and we have learned today that actually we are reaching a plateau around uh, three years, a reported three-year overall survival rate of close to of 40%. And we have also learned that uh, about 30% of patients are progression-free at three years on Keynote 006 trial that was reported by Dr. Robert today. An important update that was given today also is that patients who receive anti-PD-1 treatments and discontinue therapy after they, after they have a complete response, partial response, or stable disease are able to maintain those responses even in the absence of therapy. In Kino 006 um, uh, trial, therapy was stopped at two years by trial design. Dr. Robert has provided an update today showing that up to 95% of patients who um, have, are in complete response and are off therapy maintain this response with a median follow-up of 11 months. In addition, patients with, with uh, partial responses and stable disease were also able to maintain this clinical benefit. Mm -hmm. I think this is very encouraging and provides further reassurance for patients and physicians that these treatments do not have to be continued indefinitely and that patients can be safely observed off treatment um, for continued benefit. The challenge will be to design the proper clinical trial to find out exactly what is the duration, the minimal duration needed mm -hmm. to achieve this clinical benefit. These trials are not without side effects. They're associated with significant costs, and therefore, we need to be very um, rational in how long we apply these therapies for patients who benefit. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. You know, what's the data on using these drugs in combination with other agents, uh, including newer agents? Because of the impressive responses seen with these novel immunotherapy agents, there is a significant effort currently worldwide to try to combine these immunotherapies with other synergistic treatments. Mm -hmm. For instance, a very impressive and very encouraging clinical trial was presented at AACR a couple of months ago showing that the addition of an IDO inhibitor to um, anti-PD-1 therapy results in an impressive overall response rate similar to the ipilimumab and evolumab combination, but with much lower toxicity. This was seen especially in patients with cutaneous metastatic melanoma, but also some patients with ocular melanoma benefited. There are a number of other clinical trials exploring various immunotherapy combinations, also combination of immune checkpoint inhibition with targeted therapy uh, or with locally targeted treatments. Okay. Um, and, and finally, just to sort of close, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about your preferred regimens? Um, what are your preferred regimens for first-line therapy as well as therapy for patients who progress? Yes, um, I um, definitely can speak about that, but the issue has become a lot more controversial, especially after data reported mm -hmm. in the last few weeks and at ASCO today. As of now, in clinical practice and in guidelines, patients who have low burden disease and, and they have BRAF wild type or BRAF mutant disease are, are most often initiated on immunotherapy first line because of the likelihood of benefit and also the durable responses. What we have learned recently, however, is that the same patient population, patients with a low number of metastatic sites with normal LDH with low tumor burden are also the patients who are likely to derive durable benefit from targeted therapies. Therefore, we have now a number of options available for treatment of patients with, um, with BRAF or mutant or BRAF wild type disease. However, for patients who have BRAF mutant disease and have significant 
tumor burden, and symptomatic disease. Most clinicians would probably agree that initiation of targeted therapy up front is recommended. This is based on evidence of rapid and dramatic responses with symptomatic improvement often within days of initiating targeted therapy. What we are trying to explore and where the field is moving is to uh, to analyze the proper combination and the proper sequencing of these agents, immunotherapy followed by targeted therapy or vice versa. There are a couple of clinical trials that are currently underway that are exploring initiation of immunotherapy upfront followed by targeted therapy compared to the reverse situation. There is also a clinical trial in Europe that has a similar design but also is looking at a forced interruption, such as patients are initiated on targeted therapy up front to lower tumor burden, and at eight weeks, they are switched to immunotherapy, and they are then retreated with BRAF and MEK-directed therapy at progression. I want to say that this is a technique that we often employ in clinic. We use targeted therapy to debulk patients, but then we initiate, it, we initiate immunotherapy as soon as it is feasible in order to save our targeted therapy for clinically um, symptomatic situations and to provide the durable benefit from immunotherapy. Therefore, having a data from a clinical trial to confirm or infirm this practice is essential. Okay, wonderful. Dr. Dronka, I really want to thank you for joining us and sharing your insights with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Dr. Jennifer Cottle.